Um, this is an event happening uh, on November 10th, Tuesday, November 10th, from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. at the Marion County Public Library headquarters. This is an opportunity for Florida veterans uh, to connect with some of the career professionals over at uh, Career Source and perhaps um, get get a better job or get a job. Period. The third annual statewide event is designed to link members of the military and veterans community with local jobs and career resources. So calls if you need that repeated. Uh, but again, it is Tuesday, November 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., just three hours long. 10, 11, 12, right, 1, 3. Uh, and that's at the the big library. You know the one downtown. Uh, not downtown, but the headquarters. The, head, the headquarters. The library headquarters. Thing. Thank you. All right. Uh, we've been looking, we've been looking forward to this interview. I sure hope he can hear us and, mm-hmm. and we can hear him. Wait, I could hear him pretty good off the air. On the, on the phone is Nick Redfern. Listen to this. The first thing it says after his name is famed monster hunter. <laughs> He's the author of more than 30 books on UFOs, Bigfoot, crypt zo- cryptozoology. He's appeared on more than 70 television shows, including Sci-Fi Channel's Proof Positive, the History Channel's Ancient Aliens, MSNBC's Countdown with Keith o- uh, Olbermann. And his book is called, his new book is called Chupacapra Road Trip. Am I saying that right? In Search of the Elusive Beast, and Chupacapra is Spanish for goat sucker. Okay. <laughs> with all of that said, Nick, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah, Nick, can you hear me? I can hear, I can hear distortion. I can't make out what you're saying though, unfortunately. Okay, let's um let me ask you to call a different number if you don't mind. Can, Hello? Can, okay, see, he can't even hear the number if I tell him the number, right? No, I can, I can call him back and then ask him to call the other okay. number. Okay, all right, so you do that. You do that. Right. that all right, Nick, we're going to call you back. Robin's going to call you back. Ay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I so thought we had the, the phone problem solved, but I guess, I guess not. Uh, anyway, so Robin will try to get Nick on the phone. And uh, so, Nick, we're going we're gonna to try to call you back. Robin will call you right back. Ay, yeah, yeah. That's the way live radio works. You're listening to live radio. See, so you won't hear this again. We don't record this and play it back. We just do it, and it's, it'll be on the Internet, so you can hear all of our mistakes on the Internet. But other than that, um, anyway, Patrox, Paychecks for Patriots, that's uh, an important thing. Oh, there is a website, by the way, for that. It is, oh, my gosh. Um, there's no charge to attend the Paychecks for Patriots but veterans interested in taking part are asked to sign up at, let me give you this, it's kind of long, http colon slash slash bit dot ly, I'll repeat this, slash paychex, paychex, the number four patriots. Let me repeat it. It's http colon slash slash, I'm sure you're familiar with that part, and then bit, as in the word bit, don't know what that stands for, but bit dot l y the letter l the letter y slash paychecks the number four patriots dot com should be calling he's calling in on the other line yeah the 622 number all right see i I think no that's not him oh okay i I can't tell but that's but I, i know that's not him so so we're just waiting oh this might be him oh there it is that's his name okay good morning is this nick Yes, it is. And we, better. Oh, we can hear you much better. Okay. Well, my goodness, we have such an, an interest in what you have to say, but only 10 minutes to talk about it now. But That's but thank right. you for being on the air with us today. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm happy to be on the show. Can, can I tell you something about your topic? I am a sucker for this topic. The problem I have is I don't know who to believe and who not to believe. Because, like, if I go on YouTube, for example, I was watching this video of this guy who says a friend of his or something was taken away in a UFO and he had a camera and he took pictures of Mars and, and all this other stuff and it looked real to me. Mm-hmm. But all of the people who left comments underneath it were not so nice and they said it was phony. I don't know how they know. But, but anyway, I'm sure you face all of this all the time, right? Well, I do. I mean, it's one of these areas where when you write about controversial things like Bigfoot, UFOs, the Chupacabra, you know, you need to have a sort of a, a down-to-earth head on your shoulders uh, not, and be sort of wide-eyed and accept uncritically every story that comes along. And, uh, and I try and, you know, investigate these types of cases in the same way because I do a lot of uh, mainstream journalism and I try and, try and investigate these cases in the same way that I would investigate 
you know, uh, I don't know, a bank robbery for a newspaper article. You know, you look right, for right, corroborating right. data, additional witnesses, and try and put a story together. But I'll be the first to admit, when you're dealing with controversial issues and the paranormal, you know, you need to tread carefully in terms of not okay. uncritically just, uh, you know, uh, okay, but accepting every story that comes along. Okay, but with that said, what I've read about the chupacabra is that it doesn't seem supernatural. It seems like an animal that's eating other animals. Yeah, that's right. Um, I've been on many expeditions to Puerto Rico looking for the chupacabra, where the, the sightings originally began in the 1990s. And the, you know, what we are dealing with the, when it comes to the chupacabra, we're dealing with something that isn't sort of supernatural, but is probably some sort of unknown animal. Now, people often say, well, there's no way in today's world that, you know, we, we, we just, we would have to be animals that we still haven't found. However, a lot of people don't realize that, for example, like the African gorilla was only discovered just over two centuries ago. Really? Um, yeah, and like the giant panda, the first giant panda wasn't brought to the West until the 1920s. So, you know, there's still plenty of scope for largish unknown animals to be out there. And um, but, and I think the chupacabra is potentially one of them. And but, uh, as I said, I've been on many expeditions to okay, Puerto but, Rico and spoke to a lot of credible witnesses, um, ranchers, police officers, veterinarians, who've all had some sort of input in the investigation of these cases. So do you have a description of the chupacabra? And, and uh, did anybody ever take pictures of it? Is there Are there footprints or, or hair that you could get DNA well, from? Yeah, well, there are some, fo some photographs uh, from Puerto Rico, but like with UFO pictures, they're very controversial, and, you know, they sort of put people in different camps. One people, person says, well, I think that's real. Somebody else says, I don't think it is real. <laughs> you know, it's kind <laughs> right. of that scenario. Right. But um, for the most part, it's the, you know, the stories come from witness testimony. And again, it's important to you know, be good, a good judge of character when you're interviewing people. But as far as the descriptions are concerned, most of the, the people describe a creature that is roughly about the size of a chimpanzee, but completely lacking in hair. And they often report it having like a row of spikes running down the top of its head, down the back of its neck. And rather bizarrely, in a few cases, they've even described it as having sort of bat-like wings. So it's kind of almost like the perfect creature for, <laughs> for Halloween coming up, you know? It's yeah, like, really, it's really. Like a, like a gargoyle type of, of animal. Um, but, I mean, who knows? You know, there are some weird creatures in the real world, so it, it's not impossible that there's right, something right, right. running around in, in the El Yonke rainforest in Puerto Rico. Does it look like a dog at all? I mean, I'm looking at the images on Google when I put in Chupacabra. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, actually, the, the, the dog-like ones, there's, this is where it gets sort of confusing, is that you have the original Chupacabra on Puerto Rico, and then in the 2000s, people started report, reported seeing these weird hairless dog-like animals across the U.S., hmm. and they were sort of given the name of Chupacabra as well. But they're actually a completely different animal. Now, those sort of look like the ones you're looking at. I'm sure the ones that look like giant hairless rats. <laughs> right, uh, right, right, yeah. Yeah, but what they are, they're actually coyotes. We know that because it, unlike the Puerto Rican one and unlike Bigfoot, we actually have some corpses. Okay, that have been, okay. Yeah, they look uh, like coyotes, animals. yeah. Yeah, they've been analysed, and the DNA shows they are coyotes, but they're not just mangy coyotes, as the, as the sceptics have said. For example, mange is a condition caused by a mite where the hair falls out in tufts. These animals, are, if you look at the pictures, they're like uniformly 100% hairless, um, and even the pups are the same as well. And in a number of the cases, they have, like, shorter front limbs, so they have this weird hopping movement, almost like a kangaroo. Huh. And it seems that, a, a, like, a, a subsection of the, certainly in Texas, of the, of the uh, coyote population has actually started to mutate into something slightly so, different. And sometimes we do get sort of weird, spontaneous mutations. Nick, I want to know what's in the book. Do, in the book, do you tell us about your own experiences with, with this uh, creature? And what did you find? What did you find on your trip, on the road trip? Oh, yeah, well, the, the book itself is like a, a ten, year, 10 years of, inve of investigations and expeditions around Puerto Rico, Mexico, and the U.S., and uh, sort of, you know, going out to farms and interviewing ranchers and staking out um, little villages late at night where attacks had occurred. 
And, you know, I've come across some um, sort of weird prints on the ground, uh, you know, sort of animal prints. Um, I even heard on a couple of occasions weird howlings in the woods, which, you know, there's actually no sort of large um, indigenous wild animals on Puerto Rico. Um, so that was kind of very strange, but also intriguing. So, mm. you know, I, I feel that at least, you know, I've made an effort to go out and look for these things. Right, right, right. And, and the this, this substantial witness testimony and the circumstantial stuff but what we don't have unfortunately yet is the the body of one of these weird uh, so do you Rican do you have any theories that that combine the different things you've studied for for example when we have a new species that suddenly is on planet earth do you, is there a theory that it was brought to us by a, like an alien or something? like it got loose like it was the pet of something and they, <laughs> they, they, they <laughs> It's funny you should say that, because that's actually a, quite a popular theory with a lot of the people on Puerto Rico, the locals. Uh, when the site is kicked off in the 1990s, and even today, there are people who say, oh, well, where we see the Chupacabra, we also see UFOs. So that's given rise to that actual theory that it's sort of a, oh, really? an alien animal that was let loose on the island. And, um, and and it's a controversial theory, but admittedly that Puerto Rico does have a lot of UFO reports, given its small size, you know, it's it's far more than a lot of other places. So uh, it just kind of adds, I guess, more to the the mystery and the and the legend of the creature, really. And Puerto Rico is part of that whole uh, Bermuda Triangle thing, right? Am I right about that? Well, the devil. Yeah, that's right. Tri yeah, in the Caribbean, and um, there's also a lot of you know superstitions on the island as well, uh, sort of ghostly tales and paranormal stuff. So the entire island is sort of steeped in hmm. supernatural mystery. And have you uh, actually seen some of the bodies of the livestock that were to be attacked by this oh, creature? Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a, a good point because, you know, it, it's not just sort of the word of the people, you know. Um, for example, I um, spoke and consulted with a number of veterinarians on the island who were brought in by the Civil Defense Unit to autopsy and study um, some of the, like, for example, chickens and goats that have been attacked. And typically, they had two puncture wounds on the neck and kind of strangely one puncture wound on the stomach and there was speculation that um that the the stomach uh puncture wound was possibly a way for the animal to you know actually get hold of some of the organs <laughs> kind of but were they but, were the uh, were the goats drained of their blood i mean w was there something well, no? Yeah, I mean, that's, the, that's an interesting question because I often get that. There are rumours that, in some cases at least, the animals were drained of significant amounts of blood. Um, unfortunately, the, you know, a lot of the cases with involving ranchers, they just dumped the bodies after they realised what had happened, not necessarily thinking about that, well, somebody's actually going to want to you know, take notice of this and autopsy it. So hmm. there have been rumours and stories of... Um, blood draining and of course with the two puncture wounds on the neck it's also given the chupacabra kind of like a vampire type legend would i to would well. i be safe if, if i went to puerto rico and and put on a chupacabra costume for halloween and walked around <laughs> <laughs> would i be safe <laughs> uh, I, I don't think you probably would be safe somebody might take a pot shot at you well nick i'm glad we were able to get you on the air i, I wish it was a could have been a longer interview but anyway the book is um available chupacapa road trip online how do we get the book oh uh, it's available on amazon and also off the shelves in barnes and noble okay uh nick redfern r-e-d-f-e-r-n i just looked him up he's really easy to find uh nick thank you for being on the air i know you've been on a lot of great shows and i appreciate the fact that you've taken time to be on our little show well thanks for having me on the show guys thanks that was fun we'll take a little break we'll be right back News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. House Republican leaders strike a deal to put off a government shutdown fight and a showdown over the debt limit for two years. Some conservative groups say the deal represents the worst of Washington. Republican Darrell Issa said it was important to strike an agreement before Paul Ryan is elected House Speaker. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland. The World Series starts tonight in Kansas City. Mets manager Terry Collins, the oldest skipper in the majors, with his first appearance at the World Series. Baseball for 45 years, it tells you how hard it is to get here. 
so we better enjoy it, and I'm enjoying it. Royals manager Ned Yost was here last year, but lost to San Francisco, and now looks to finish it. Fox Radio's Jeff Manasso in Kansas City. Fiat Chrysler recalling nearly 94,000 SUVs because of a fire risk, and Ford's third quarter earnings more than doubling much of it thanks to higher sales of its new F-150 pickup truck. Fox News, we report, you decide. You know the story of Hansel and Gretel, where Hansel left breadcrumbs on the trail so they could find their way back home? That's what you do when you use public Wi-Fi, or shop online, or give out your social security number.